Section 25 of the Wisdom of the Ancients. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Wisdom of the Ancients, a series of mythological fables by Francis Bacon. Dionysus, or Bacchus, explained of the passions. The fable runs that Semele, Jupiter's mistress, having bound him by an inviolable oath to grant her an unknown request, desired he would embrace her in the same form and manner he used to embrace Juno. The promise being irrevocable, she was burnt to death with lightning in the performance. The embryo, however, was sewed up and carried in Jupiter's thigh till the complete time of its birth but the burden thus rendering the father lame and causing him pain the child was thence called dionysus when born he was committed for some years to be nursed by proserpina and when grown up appeared with so effeminate a face that his sex seemed somewhat doubtful he also died and was buried for a time but afterwards revived when a youth he first introduced the cultivation and dressing of vines the method of preparing wine and taught the use thereof whence becoming famous he subdued the world even to the utmost bounds of the indies he rode in a chariot drawn by tigers there danced about him certain deformed demons called cobali etc the muses also joined in his train he was married to Ariadne, who was deserted by Theseus. The ivy was sacred to him. He was also held the inventor and institutor of religious rites and ceremonies, but such as were wild, frantic, and full of corruption and cruelty. He had also the power of striking men with frenzies. Pentheus and Orpheus were torn to pieces by the frantic women at his orgies the first for climbing a tree to behold their outrageous ceremonies and the other for the music of his harp but the acts of this god are much entangled and confounded with those of jupiter explanation this fable seems to contain a little system of morality so that there is scarce any better invention in all ethics under the history of bacchus is drawn the nature of unlawful desires or affections and disorder for the appetite and thirst of apparent good is the mother of all unlawful desire though ever so destructive and all unlawful desires are conceived in unlawful wishes or requests harshly indulged or granted before they are well understood or considered and when the affection begins to grow warm the mother of it the nature of good is destroyed and burnt up by the heat and whilst an unlawful desire lies in the embryo or unripened in the mind which is its father and here represented by jupiter it is cherished and concealed especially in the inferior part of the mind corresponding to the thigh of the body where pain twitches and depresses the mind so far as to render its resolutions and actions imperfect and lame and even after this child of the mind is confirmed and gains strength by consent and habit and comes forth into action it still must be nursed by proserpina for a time that is it skulks and hides its head in a clandestine manner as it were underground till at length when the checks of shame and fear are removed and the requisite boldness acquired it either assumes the pretext of some virtue or openly despises infamy it is justly observed that every vehement passion appears of a doubtful sex as having the strength of a man at first but at last the impotence of a woman it is also excellently added that bacchus died and rose again for the affection sometimes seem to die and be no more but there is no trusting them even though they were buried 
being always apt and ready to rise again whenever the occasion or object offers that bacchus should be the inventor of wine carries a fine allegory with it for every affection is cunning and subtle in discovering a proper matter to nourish and feed it and of all things known to mortals wine is the most powerful and effectual for exciting and inflaming passions of all kinds being indeed like a common fuel to all it is again with great eloquence observed of bacchus that he subdued provinces and undertook endless expeditions for the affections never rest satisfied with what they enjoy but with an endless and insatiable appetite thirst after something further the tigers are prettily feigned to draw the chariot for as soon as any affection shall from going on foot be advanced to ride it triumphs over reason and exerts its cruelty fierceness and strength against all that oppose it it is also humorously imagined that ridiculous demons dance and frisk about this chariot for every passion produces indecent disorderly interchangeable and deformed motions in the eyes countenance and gestures so that the person under the impulse whether of anger insult love etc though to himself he may seem grand lofty and obliging yet in the eyes of others appears mean contemptible or ridiculous the muses also are found in the train of bacchus for there is scarcely any passion without its art science or doctrine to court and flatter it but in this respect the indulgence of men of genius has greatly detracted from the majesty of the muses who ought to be the leaders and conductors of human life and not the handmaids of the passions the allegory of bacchus falling in love with a caste mistress is extremely noble for it is certain that the affections always court and covet what has been rejected upon experience and all those who by serving and indulging their passions immensely raise the value of enjoyment should know that whatever they covet and pursue whether riches pleasure glory learning or anything else they only pursue those things that have been forsaken and cast off with contempt by great numbers in all ages after possession and experience nor is it without a mystery that the ivory is sacred to bacchus and this for two reasons first because ivy is an evergreen or flourishes in the winter and secondly because it winds and creeps about so many things as trees walls and buildings and raises itself above them as to the first every passion grows fresh strong and vigorous by opposition and prohibition as it were by a kind of contrast or antiperistasis like the ivy in the winter and for the second the predominant passion of the mind throws itself like the ivy round all human actions entwines all our resolutions and perpetually adheres to and mixes itself among or even overtops them and no wonder that superstitious rites and ceremonies are attributed to bacchus when almost every ungovernable passion grows wanton and luxuriant in corrupt religions nor again that the fury and frenzy should be sent and dealt out by him because every passion is a short frenzy and if it be vehement lasting and take deep root it terminates in madness and hence the allegory of pentheus and orpheus being torn to pieces is evident for every headstrong passion is extremely bitter severe inveterate and revengeful upon all curious inquiry wholesome admonition free counsel and persuasion lastly the confusion between the persons of jupiter and bacchus will justly admit of an allegory 
because noble and meritorious actions may sometimes proceed from virtue sound reason and magnanimity and sometimes again from a concealed passion and secret desire or ill however they may be extolled and praised insomuch that it is not easy to distinguish betwixt the acts of bacchus and the acts of jupiter End of section 25